Hi guys, welcome to fifth grade, chapter one, lesson two. We're gonna go ahead and get started with number two. So all we're gonna do is it underlines a number for you. We're gonna drop that number down, so that number is an eight, and then you're gonna count how many places afterwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers, afters, zeros. Okay, so you're gonna drop down whatever number is underlined, and everything after that becomes a zero. That's all you have to do, okay? So doing number three, we're gonna drop down that two, and then there's two numbers after it, so I'm gonna put two zeros, okay? It really is that easy, okay? Number four, we're gonna drop down the nine, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six numbers afterwards, one, two, three, four, five, six. Put your commas in. That really is that easy. Don't make it any harder than it's gotta be. Okay, you guys are gonna go ahead and do through number eight. We are gonna go down and do number nine. So when it says it wants it in two other forms, we have expanded form, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we have um, word form, okay? So expanded form is on this one. That one is 10,000. The five is 5,000. The four is 400. There is no value for that zero, so we don't have to put it. We just need to put a nine for the last number, okay? Then um, we can do word form. So it's going to be 15,000, 400, and nine. Pretty much exactly how you say the word when you're reading it, that's exactly what you're going to write. The other way that sometimes they want you to do these is going one, because that digit's a one, times 100,000, because it's in the 100,000 spot, plus, there are no values for the zeros, so plus two times 100 because it's in the 100 spot. Then we have another zero, there's no value for that. And then we're gonna say plus three times one because it's in the one spot, okay? Some teachers will let you do it this way. A lot of them are gonna want you to do it that way, okay? So we're going to say 100,000. comma, 200, and three. Okay, there we go, okay? All right, so you guys are gonna do 11 and 12, okay? Depending on how picky your teacher is, and you're gonna know that better than I do, you might wanna go with this guy, okay? But these are your two other ways. There's expanded form, which is this, or this, and then there's word form. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go down and do number 13. Number 13 says the US Census Bureau has a population clock on the internet. On a recent day, the United States population was listed as 310,000, oh, 310,763,136. Oh, write this number in word form, so that's what we're gonna do, okay? 300, Ten million, comma, seven hundred sixty three thousand, comma, one hundred thirty six. There you go, okay? We're gonna go ahead and do number 14. It says in 2008, the population of 10 to 14 year olds in the United States was this number. Write this number in expanded form. So we're gonna drop down that two times, it is in the 
there we go, it is in the 10 millionths place. Plus, there is no value for the zero, so we're going to start with the four. Four times 100,000 plus eight times 10,000 plus four times 1,000 plus one times 100 plus six times 10 plus three times one. Now you can see we have each one of those numbers, two, four, eight, four, one, six, three. Okay, we didn't have any value for this digit right here because it's a zero. Other than that, you've got it. Okay, so we're gonna go over onto the back where you guys are gonna do the lesson check, just like always. We're gonna do the spiral review says, if the pattern below continues, what number likely comes next? So I'm going to say, what's the difference between 9 and 12? Well, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's 3. How about 12 to 15? 12, 13, 14, 15. That's 3. Okay, so now I see a pattern. 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 3 again. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to 21, and I'm going to add 3. 21. 22, 23, 24, 24, okay? We're gonna go ahead and look at number four. It says to find the quotient and remainder for 52 divided by eight. Okay, all right, well, eight cannot go into five. I'm gonna put a placeholder X there because I need to make sure that I've lined up my columns. Okay, and I know that 6 times 8 is 48, so that's going to be a 6. Now, 6 times 8, I said, was 48. When I subtract, I get 4 left over. It's going to be 6, remainder 4. That's it. It's as much as you have to do there. Okay, we're going to go down to number 5, and it says, How many pairs of parallel sides does the trapezoid below have? Well, the only set of pairs that it has are these two lines right here, okay? And it says how many pairs. So if you have like a pair of shoes, that's one pair, but you have two shoes in it. These are two lines, but that only makes one pair. So one pair, okay? Now, how many lines of symmetry does the figure below appear to have? The only line of symmetry is gonna go right down that middle. That's the only place that you can fold it in half and have both sides match up perfectly. So it is going to be one line of symmetry. There we go. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out for 1.2. Come on back for 1.3. See you soon.